In electronics, a digital to analog converter is a function that converts digital data into an analog signal. An analog to digital converter performs the reverse function. Unlike analog signals, digital data can be transmitted, manipulated, and stored without degradation, albeit with more complex equipment. But a DAC is needed to convert the digital signal to analog to drive an earphone or loudspeaker amplifier in order to produce sound. DACs and their inverse, ADCs, are part of an enabling technology that has contributed greatly to the digital revolution. To illustrate, consider a typical long-distance telephone call. The caller's voice is converted into an analog electrical signal by a microphone, then the analog signal is converted to a digital stream by an ADC. The digital stream is then divided into packets where it may be mixed with other digital data, not necessarily audio. The digital packets are then sent to the destination, but each packet may take a completely different route and may not even arrive at the destination in the correct time order. The digital voice data is then extracted from the packets and assembled into a digital data stream. A DAC converts this into an analog electrical signal, which drives an audio amplifier, which in turn drives a loudspeaker, which finally produces sound. There are several DAC architectures. The suitability of a DAC for a particular application is determined by six main parameters, physical size, power consumption, resolution, speed, accuracy, cost. Due to the complexity and the need for precisely matched components, all but the most specialist DACs are implemented as integrated circuits. Digital to analog conversion can degrade a signal. So a DAC should be specified that that has insignificant errors in terms of the application. DACs are commonly used in music players to convert digital data streams into analog audio signals. They are also used in televisions and mobile phones to convert digital video data into analog video signals which connect to the screen drivers to display monochrome or color images. These two applications use DACs at opposite ends of the speed resolution trade-off. The audio DAC is a low-speed high-resolution type while the video DAC is a high-speed low-to-medium resolution type. Discrete DACs would typically be extremely high-speed low-resolution power-hungry types, as used in military radar systems. Very high-speed test equipment, especially sampling oscilloscopes, may also use discrete DACs. Overview a DAC converts an abstract finite precision number into a physical quantity. In particular, DACs are often used to convert finite precision time series data to a continually varying physical signal. A typical DAC converts the abstract numbers into a concrete sequence of impulses that are then processed by a reconstruction filter using some form of interpolation to fill in data between the impulses. Other DAC methods produce a pulse density modulated signal that can then be filtered in a similar way to produce a smoothly varying signal. As per the new Wister Euro Shannon sampling theorem, a DAC can reconstruct the original signal from the sampled data provided that its bandwidth meets certain requirements. Digital sampling introduces quantization error that manifests as low level noise added to the reconstructed signal. Practical operation Instead of impulses, usually the sequence of numbers update the analog voltage at uniform sampling intervals, which are then often interpolated via a reconstruction filter to continuously varied levels. These numbers are written to the DAC, typically with a clock signal that causes each number to be latched in sequence, at which time the DAC output voltage changes rapidly from the previous value to the value represented by the currently latched number. The effect of this is that the output voltage is held in time at the current value until the next input number is latched, resulting in a piecewise constant or staircase-shaped output. This is equivalent to a zero-order hold operation and has an effect on the frequency response of the reconstructed signal. The fact that DACs output a sequence of piecewise constant values or rectangular pulses causes multiple harmonics above the nihilist frequency. Usually, these are removed with a low-pass filter acting as a reconstruction filter in applications that require it. Applications Audio Most modern audio signals are stored in digital form and in order to be heard through speakers they must be converted into an analog signal. 
DACs are therefore found in CD players, digital music players, and PC sound cards. Specialist standalone DACs can also be found in high-end hi-fi systems. These normally take the digital output of a compatible CD player or dedicated transport and convert the signal into an analog line level output that can then be fed into an amplifier to drive speakers. Similar digital to analog converters can be found in digital speakers such as USB speakers, and in sound cards. In VoIP applications, the source must first be digitized for transmission, so it undergoes conversion via an analog to digital converter, and is then reconstructed into analog using a DAC on the receiving party's end. Video Video sampling tends to work on a completely different scale altogether thanks to the highly nonlinear response both of cathode ray tubes and the human eye, using a gamma curve to provide an appearance of evenly distributed brightness steps across the display's full dynamic range, hence the need to use RAMDICs in computer video applications with deep enough color resolution to make engineering a hard-coded value into the DAC for each output level of each channel impractical. Given this inherent distortion, it is not unusual for a television or video projector to truthfully claim a linear contrast ratio of 1000 to 1 or greater, equivalent to 10 bits of audio precision even though it may only accept signals with 8-bit precision and use an LCD panel that only represents 6 or 7 bits per channel. Video signals from a digital source, such as a computer, must be converted to analog form if they are to be displayed on an analog monitor. As of 2007, analog inputs were more commonly used than digital, but this changed as flat panel displays with DVI and or HDMI connections became more widespread. A video DAC is, however, incorporated in any digital video player with analog outputs. The DAC is usually integrated with some memory, which contains conversion tables for gamma correction, contrast and brightness, to make a device called a RAMDIC. A device that is distantly related to the DAC is the digitally controlled potentiometer, used to control an analog signal digitally. Mechanical, an unusual application of digital to analog conversion was the Wiffletree electromechanical digital to analog converter linkage in the IBM Selectric typewriter. DAC types, the most common types of electronic DACs are, the pulse width modulator, the simplest DAC type. A stable current or voltage is switched into a low-pass analog filter with a duration determined by the digital input code. This technique is often used for electric motor speed control, but has many other applications as well. Oversampling DACs or interpolating DACs such as the Delta Sigma DAC, use a pulse density conversion technique. The oversampling technique allows for the use of a lower resolution DAC internally. A simple 1-bit DAC is often chosen because the oversampled result is inherently linear. The DAC is driven with a pulse density modulated signal, created with the use of a low-pass filter, step nonlinearity, and negative feedback loop, in a technique called delta sigma modulation. This results in an effective high-pass filter acting on the quantization noise thus steering this noise out of the low frequencies of interest into the megahertz frequencies of little interest, which is called noise shaping. The quantization noise at these high frequencies is removed or greatly attenuated by use of an analog low-pass filter at the output. Most very high-resolution DACs are of this type due to its high linearity and low cost. Higher oversampling rates can relax the specifications of the output low-pass filter and enable further suppression of quantization noise. Speeds of greater than 100,000 samples per second and resolutions of 24 bits are attainable with Delta Sigma DACs. A short comparison with pulse width modulation shows that a 1-bit DAC with a simple first-order integrator would have to run at 3 ATH set to achieve 24 meaningful bits of resolution requiring a higher-order low-pass filter and the noise-shaping loop. A single integrator is a low-pass filter with a frequency response inversely proportional to frequency and using one such integrator in the noise-shaping loop is a first-order delta sigma modulator. Multiple higher-order topologies are used to achieve higher degrees of noise-shaping with a stable topology. The binary weighted DAC which contains individual electrical components for each bit of the DAC connected to a summing point. 
these precise voltages or current sum to the correct output value. This is one of the fastest conversion methods but suffers from poor accuracy because of the high precision required for each individual voltage or current. Such high precision components are expensive, so this type of converter is usually limited to 8-bit resolution or less. Switched resistor DAC contains of a parallel resistor network. Individual resistors are enabled or bypassed in the network based on the digital input. Switched current source DAC, from which different current sources are selected based on the digital input. Switched capacitor DAC contains a parallel capacitor network. Individual capacitors are connected or disconnected with switches based on the input. The Adua Ladder DAC which is a binary weighted DAC that uses a repeating cascaded structure of resistor values and 2R. This improves the precision due to the relative ease of producing equal valued matched resistors. However, wide converters perform slowly due to increasingly large RC constants for each added Adua link. The successive approximation or cyclic DAC, which successively constructs the output during each cycle. Individual bits of the digital input are processed each cycle until the entire input is accounted for. The thermometer coded DAC, which contains an equal resistor or current source segment for each possible value of DAC output. An 8 bit thermometer DAC would have 255 segments, and a 16 bit thermometer DAC would have 65,535 segments. This is perhaps the fastest and highest precision DAC architecture but at the expense of high cost. Conversion speeds of greater than 1 billion samples per second have been reached with this type of DAC. Hybrid DACs, which use a combination of the above techniques in a single converter. Most DAC integrated circuits are of this type due to the difficulty of getting low cost, high speed and high precision in one device. The segmented DAC which combines the thermometer-coded principle for the most significant bits and the binary-weighted principle for the least significant bits. In this way, a compromise is obtained between precision and number of resistors or current sources. The full binary-weighted design means 0% segmentation, the full thermometer-coded design means 100% segmentation. Most DACs, shown earlier in this list, rely on a constant reference voltage to create their output value. Alternatively, a multiplying DAC takes a variable input voltage for their conversion. This puts additional design constraints on the bandwidth of the conversion circuit. DAC performance, DACs are very important to system performance. The most important characteristics of these devices are, resolution, the number of possible output levels the DAC is designed to reproduce. This is usually stated as the number of bits it uses, which is the base 2 logarithm of the number of levels. For instance a 1-bit DAC is designed to reproduce 2 levels while an 8-bit DAC is designed for 256 levels. Resolution is related to the effective number of bits which is a measurement of the actual resolution attained by the DAC. Resolution determines color depth in video applications and audio bit depth in audio applications. Maximum sampling rate, a measurement of the maximum speed at which the DAC circuitry can operate and still produce the correct output. As stated in the new Wister Euro Shannon sampling theorem, defines a relationship between the sampling frequency and bandwidth of the sampled signal. Monotonicity, the ability of a DAC's analog output to move only in the direction that the digital input moves, this characteristic is very important for DACs used as a low frequency signal source or as a digitally programmable trim element. Total harmonic distortion and noise, a measurement of the distortion and noise introduced to the signal by the DAC. It is expressed as a percentage of the total power of unwanted harmonic distortion and noise that accompany the desired signal. This is a very important DAC characteristic for dynamic and small signal DAC applications. Dynamic range, a measurement of the difference between the largest and smallest signals the DAC can reproduce expressed in decibels. This is usually related to resolution and noise floor. Other measurements, such as phase distortion and jitter, can also be very important for some applications, some of which may even rely on accurate production of phase-adjusted signals. 
Linear PCM audio sampling usually works on the basis of each bit of resolution being equivalent to 6 decibels of amplitude. Non-linear PCM encodings attempt to improve their effective dynamic ranges by a variety of methods. Logarithmic step sizes between the output signal strengths represented by each data bit, DAC figures of merit, static performance, differential nonlinearity shows how much two adjacent code analog values deviate from the ideal one LSB step. Integral nonlinearity shows how much the DAC transfer characteristic deviates from an ideal one. That is, the ideal characteristic is usually a straight line. INL shows how much the actual voltage at a given code value differs from that line, in LSBs. Gain, offset, noise is ultimately limited by the thermal noise generated by passive components such as resistors. For audio applications and in room temperatures, such noise is usually a little less than 1 I 1 quarter V of white noise. This limits performance to less than 20 to 21 bits even in 24-bit DACs. Frequency domain performance, spurious free dynamic range indicates in decibel the ratio between the powers of the converted main signal and the greatest undesired spur. Signal to noise and distortion ratio indicates in decibel the ratio between the powers of the converted main signal and the sum of the noise in the generated harmonic spurs. ITH harmonic distortion indicates the power of the ITH harmonic of the converted main signal. Total harmonic distortion is the sum of the powers of all HDI. If the maximum DNL error is less than 1 LSB, then the DA converter is guaranteed to be monotonic. However, many monotonic converters may have a maximum DNL greater than 1 LSB. Time domain performance, glitch impulse area, response uncertainty, time nonlinearity. See also, integral linearity, ES squared S, modem, RAMDIC. References. Further reading. External links. ADC and DAC Glossary.